Hey there, it's Jamie J. I am the CEO, founder, and shareholder of Bottleneck Distant Assistance. I'm also the host here, live with Bottleneck, uh, every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Central Time, where we help stop the bottleneck in your business and in your life. Uh, and I'm super excited to have Mark Hirschberg on today. We're going to be talking about his book. He's the author of Career Toolkit, Essential Skills for Success That No One Taught You, and a lot more. So I'm really excited for that. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started here. So bear with me. We'll be back in 38 seconds. Get your seatbelt on. Right. This is Jamie with Live with Bottleneck. Kudos to you if you gathered what just happened. Uh, let me know. I will send you a copy of my book. Tell me what just happened here and what happened with Live with Bottleneck. Uh, so Live with Bottleneck, for those of you that are uh, see this show a lot, you're going to know. Um, we're going to have a lot of fun with this, though. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in and uh, get this show on the road, and uh, we'll see what we can do here. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, get this going. We are talking today to Mark Hirschberg. He's the author of Career Toolkit, Essential Skills for Success That No One Taught You. So we're going to be talking about creating your career toolkit. That should be a lot of fun. And why, oh, why <laughs> is, is Mark going to help you stop the bottleneck? Well, Mark's the author, like I said, of Career Toolkit, um, educated at MIT, fairly Fairly smart fella. Mark has spent his career launching and fixing new ventures at startups, Fortune 500s, and academia. He's developed new software languages, online marketplaces, new authentic authentication systems, and tracked criminals and terrorists on the dark web. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for your service, Mark. Mark helped create the Undergraduate Practice Opportunities Program, MIT's Career Success Accelerator, where he's taught for 20 years. Mark also serves on the board's of nonprofits, techie youth, and plant a million corals. Ooh, that's going to be interesting. I want to talk to him about that. Without any further ado, please allow me to introduce you. Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on the show today. Oh my gosh! Thank you. Uh, how, how does it feel to to say, uh, yeah, I, I went to MIT? Uh, feels great. Maybe <laughs> not so much when I was there. It was definitely a challenge. But I enjoy hard work. I enjoy learning, and I'm really glad I went through it all. And I'm glad to say I'm I'm affiliated with that wonderful institution. That's fantastic! Congratulations. Um, tell me about the coral. Yeah, plant a million corals. It was started by Dr. David Vaughn. I, a bunch of other people, met David at a conference a few years ago. He was in the process of retiring, and he mentioned he knew how to rapid grow coral. And all of us said to him, wait a second, if you can do this, you are the person we need. So if you're not familiar with the ocean ecosystem, a lot of the marine life lives near coral reefs. Those are the cities of the oceans. And as the ocean has warmed, a lot of coral has died. So it's almost like you're losing your cities and you lose a lot of the population that goes with them. He has, he can fast grow coral and he has certain species of coral that are more tolerant to warmer temperatures. So we're looking, we, we said we would need to do a nonprofit. We need to get this out there. He said, look, I'm a scientist. I don't know the business side. We said, no, no, we'll take care of that for you, but we need you to do what you do best. And thankfully we have this wonderful nonprofit. It's a 5013C and we are trying to get more coral back in the oceans so we can support marine life, our ecosystem and our environment. I love it. I love it. We were just part of a, a big push called, uh, have you ever heard of Team Seas? Teamseas.org? Yeah. Yes. It was fantastic. We had a lot of fun. They tried to raise $30 million in the span of about two months, I think it was. And for every dollar they raised, they would take a pan, pound of, of trash out of the oceans, the rivers, and the beaches. And they did it. 
they did it. They raised over thirty million dollars. So it was it was it was unbelievable. I'm a big fan. So thank you for doing that because I um you're right. Our ocean cities are are tough, and I think that's why it's open game, open season, pretty much all year round for the lionfish <laughs> everywhere <laughs> you go because those they're hungry. They're hungry. They want to get rid of them. <laughs> Um, sorry to digress. I'm just very interested in that. And I'm, I'm really stoked that you would support something like that. But I wonder if we can, I want to kind of switch gears and talk about creating your own career toolkit. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more of your background and, and how this came to be where you, you wrote this book and what it's doing for you right now. Yeah, it doesn't seem like a, a natural extension of someone who is a hardcore nerd who went to MIT. When I graduated in the 90s, I started off as a software developer. And I said early on, you know, I want to become a CTO, a chief technology officer. But I realized that to be a CTO, I need not just the engineering skills, but I need other skills. I need leadership, communication, negotiation, team building, networking. No one ever taught me these skills. And by the way, this applies not only if you say, well, here's the career path I want inside an organization, but if you want to start your own company, many entrepreneurs, for example, it's easy to say, I have an idea but you need to know other skills. You know you need a good network. Communicating to partners and clients, that's really important. Leading, especially, these aren't people you can just say, you work for me, do what I say. You have to lead different groups to come together to create some type of joint venture. You need all these skills as well, even if you are on your own. So I knew I needed these skills, but no one taught me. They're not what you learn in college typically. So I developed them in myself and quickly realized the skills aren't just for executives and founders and solopreneurs, they're for everyone. So I began to train up my team. And as I was doing so, MIT had done some surveys of companies and they said, these are the skills we want to see in everyone, but we can't find it either. So at MIT, our solution was, well, we're going to start teaching our students. And we created the Career Success Accelerator. When I heard they were doing that, I reached out. I said, well, I've been training up my own team. I'm happy to share material, whatever I can do to help. I thought I'd just meet with them for an afternoon, but I wound up helping to create the class and then they asked me to help teach it. So I and other people like me have been teaching there for 20 years. And recently I said, I know this applies not just to MIT students, this is universal. So let's put into a book and an app and all the speaking and other things I do along with it. Oh, that's fantastic. How long did it take you to put this book together? It's funny. I wrote the book in about three to four months. However, wow. here's the caveat. I've been teaching it for 20 years. So I can't really say, oh, yeah, you know, it just it came out quickly. I had 20 years where we were working through material from teaching it to students. I know when I say this, what are the next three questions I'm going to get? OK, I better include that in the book. So the act of writing was really easy. I thought about my students or I thought about other lectures I do or other people I stand in front of and just said, OK, I'm imagining you in front of me. Now I'm just going to sit there and type what I would say. So the writing part was easy. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, um, and a good friend of mine, Gordon McDougall, says great discussion. <laughs> Thank you, um, Gordon. Yeah. So so I have I have a, a plethora of questions. Um, but first and foremost, the career toolkit. Um, can you tell us a little bit about who is this perfect for and where are they at on their journey to where picking up this book is really going to help them with that next step forward? Great question. Let me just tell you what's in the book because that will help. There's 10 chapters in three sections. Section one, how to create and execute a career plan. Again, it's not just getting bigger titles, but it's how to grow and develop yourself. Skills like working effectively, understanding corporate cultures, whether your own or that of your clients. Chapter three, interviewing, not as a candidate, but from the perspective of the hiring manager. We never train anyone how to interview other people, and yet we expect people to do it. Second section, leadership and management. And I break down leadership as a separate chapter, and then the people side and the process side of management. And the third section, networking, negotiating, communication, and ethics. So if any of these skills are ones where you say, I wish I could get better at that, I think being a better negotiator would help, being a better leader would help, being a better networker would help, then this book is for you. And by the way, you don't have to go through in linear order. It's designed that you can say, you know what, I'm going to go right into chapter nine, negotiating. I'm going to go back to chapter three, 
interviewing. Then we go to chapter five. You can jump around in any order you want. So what kind of feedback have you been getting on this? Um, you said sales were doing well and and it's going. I, I, I always enjoy hearing the feedback because now you're getting firsthand experience on what someone else is doing um, and what they're learning about or what challenges, maybe these obstacles they're helping them overcome, what bottlenecks they may be able to get get through over this. Have, 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 what kind of uh, feedback have you been getting? We've gotten great feedback. People really like the book, the way each chapter is designed. I, I hate a lot of business books because they give you an idea and then they spend 40 more pages beating you over the head with the same idea. Yeah, yeah I got it. I don't only need five pages. Now you're wasting my time. Each chapter, we have a mental shift and then just a bunch of actionable things you can do. Boom, boom, boom. Things you can today start to implement. So you got a lot of great feedback on that. Again, I've heard, well, as soon as I read this, I had a question. Then the next page, you address that question because I've done this for so long. We're seeing a lot of traction now with the great resignation. A lot of people are saying, what do I want out of life? We're seeing organizations I have on my website. There is a free download for how to create a development program at your company. It's free to download the development program. There is no cost to implementing it. It's just whatever materials you want. Could be my book, could be a different book, could be an article, could be a great podcast like this one. So companies are now saying, yeah, I want to figure out how I can develop up my employees, my team. And for small companies, what they do is they usually join with other small companies to get different people with different perspectives. And so they're doing that and they're finding this is a great way to help retain employees and upskill them at the same time. And that is helping book sales as well, because many do use my book, but you don't have to. You know, I really like that. Um, I, I think it's I think it's really good. Um, we were talking in the green room before we actually came live. And and uh, you said uh, you were asking me a little bit about the show and questions. And I said, it's my job to share what it is that that you're doing to kind of get that out there, because I feel you said there's a lot of business books out there that are, you know, kind of trying to beat you over the head and, and learn, learn. OK, I got it. Next move. Um, so there is something unique and different about your book. What I really like being able to do is be in a position to promote you and and share what it is that this this experience that you've had is so unique compared to what most people um, have experienced. And you said it yourself. They don't teach you this in school. Um, I've sat in... Uh, here I am still paying off my college education and I never graduated, right? I left and started a business. But but what 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 I did find about that is I've sat in on other business um, uh, uh, conversations with buddies that at other schools and stuff like that. Even entrepreneurial uh, business classes, they still missed a lot of what real business is all about. The negotiation and the, you know, the networking. Granted, amazing what college does for networking and building relationships. And many people still have those relationships. You know, their old college buddies are still friends today and you're doing maybe business ventures or maybe an introduction because this person knows this person. But there's a lot of stuff in real business that people miss out on, I believe. And I wonder if maybe you can touch on that. And then I want to go back to the uh, great resignation a little bit because I have some questions for you there. But first and foremost, um, what is different about real business rather than, you know, college. In school, we're teaching you theory. We're teaching you fundamentals. And yes, that is important. But if you think about what you learn in school, if you're in a particular discipline, I studied physics, for example, they're teaching me how to solve physics problems, which includes Newtonian mechanics, quantum mechanics. Very useful if you want to be a physicist and honestly useful for me, even though I didn't become one. But they didn't say, oh, and by the way, here's how to be a leader. And that's not unique to physics. If you studied accounting, if you studied marketing, if you studied philosophy, they don't say, oh, and by the way, here's how to be a leader. But at work, at some point, you probably will be a leader. We skip these things. Even you brought up networking. And yeah, college campus is a great place to build your network. You're with lots of other people. You're at a time in your life. You're excited to meet other people. Now, networking, we've all heard it's important. Even as a kid, I remember hearing it's important. Parents, teachers, did anyone ever sit down and say to you, by the way, here is how to network effectively? We just throw people in. Yeah, it's like throwing you into the pool and saying, well, try not to drown. Oh, good. You didn't. Great. Okay, we'll call you a swimmer. 
<laughs> no, your parents probably said, we're sending you to swim class so you don't accidentally drown, so you can move in the in the water when you need to. We need to do that with networking. Fortunately, we don't, which is why I wrote this book for that and these other skills. I love that. It, unless you're like my Uncle Mike. Thanks, Uncle Mike. He threw me into the in the pool as when I was a little kid. That's kind of how I struggled, uh, flailed around and, and learned. Ultimately did get swimming lessons. Thank you, mom. But uh, yeah, my Uncle Mike just kind of tossed me in the deep end there. Um, and quite frankly, that analogy rings true to so many people. Um, and it might be one of the reasons why networking is so important in business, so important. I am not a very social kind of like, I'm good, put me in front of the camera, no problem. Put me in a room with other people that I don't really know. I'm the person over in the corner. The school dances, I sat in the bleachers. I didn't want to, like, that is just not me. I'm not comfortable in that environment, but I, I kind of, I have to learn how to do that. And I believe, um, please tell me if I'm wrong, but if I were to learn the skills, that might give me some confidence in order to be able to uh, network a little bit better. I have the confidence to network. Any, any, does any of that make any sense? Absolutely, 100%. And in fact, here is a, a very simple thing to help you network better. You said, oh, if I put me in a room with all these people, yeah, I, I don't do well. Many people don't. I happen to be a bit of an introvert myself. We have this view of networking as it's that sales guy. He walks into the room with 100 people. 30 minutes later, he's back with 20 business cards. I go, wow, how'd you do that? That's not networking. Collecting a bunch of business cards and saying, look, I got these cards. I'm now networked with these people. That's not what networking is about. Adding people on LinkedIn and saying, ooh, I'm now networked with these people. Nope. That's like saying, hey, I just swiped right on a bunch of women on Tinder. Well, now I'm dating them. Right? You, you wouldn't accept that. You'd say, no, Mark, you swipe right, they swipe right. There's some interest, but you're not dating them. Now you have to build that relationship, which we would do one-on-one. -on -one called dates. Same thing. You don't have to be in this room and say, I'm getting lots of business cards. Networking is relationship building. You can do it in a room of lots of people if that's where you're comfortable. You can do it one-on-one -on -one when you meet someone for coffee. When you're on a call, you are building that relationship. And that's the part people forget. They get the business card and think, I'm done. It's like get the swipe right and think, I'm done. Build that relationship that you can do and I can do and all of us, even as introverts, we have friends, we know how to have a conversation. So that's how we want to network. It doesn't have to be in that stereotype of the crowded room. You know, I really like that because now you've you've uh, you've assigned a definition to networking. And, and a lot of people don't, if you ask them what's networking, you're gonna get 20 different answers. Pretty close, maybe similar, but having that definition really sets the expectation of what ha needs to occur. And just by the very definition, People, I think, in my opinion, would become better networkers because they understand what networking truly is as far as a def definition is concerned. Does that make sense? Yep. They focus on the relationship, not on collecting business cards. And that's where the value is in those relationships. I love it. Uh, you mentioned earlier, you talked about the great resignation. I am infatuated with learning and educating myself on what's happening. 12.3% of the workforce in November resigned, 11.6% resigned in the month of December. Um, as of the time in this recording, we're uh, towards the latter half of the uh, month of January. So I'm talking about 2021, the very end of 2021. That's a lot of people leaving. And I, what I focus on is because this whole COVID thing and, and, and the, the difference in work and, and it's kind of like a worker's uh, climate right now, um, they're kind of in charge. And, and you see a lot of them maybe leaving to start their own business or leaving to go get a better position. And I think, in my opinion, two things are happening right there. Number one, people are feeling confident that if they leave, they can start up a new venture or get a better job, be getting paid more money pretty easily right now uh, because of our current um, economy, how it's working. The second part, though, that I'm really concerned about is what's happening to those people that are staying at these companies. And now, since these other people have left, there's a person there that is now bound for overwhelm or burnout because they're not only handling their roles, but they're also handling the roles of the people that may have left. So they're doing two or three times the work. 
what's going to happen to those people over the course of the next three, six, nine, 12 months. Um, and the reason why I'm asking this, because I think it's it's a direct correlation with regards to your book and what it is that you're doing and talking to people about this great resignation and kind of how to frame this. Um, where do you see us heading? Where are we now? Where do you see us heading in the future? And what kind of advice would you give to people to hopefully um, set us up for success as opposed to burnout and failure? Lots to unpack there, but really good questions. You've pointed out, of course, we see two factors that are causing people to want to leave. One is the increase, I'm going to call it pressures of working, whether that's your frontline person saying, I'm just concerned about COVID or I'm concerned about the irate customers. And it's getting less pleasant to work. And on the other hand, it's getting easier to find other options, whether those options are find another job, start your own company. And think about starting a business today compared to, let's even say six, seven years ago, well, I don't have to get on a plane to find customers. I can do it by Zoom. That's acceptable. If I need support, I can use services like your distance assistance. Those were less common years ago. So there's a lot more support when you want to do something on your own. So that's increasing the drive to taking your side hustle, turning into your business. You point out very astutely that when some leave, it just gets harder for the people remaining. They might not hire as fast as losing people and those who stay, work gets harder. We're seeing almost a tale of two companies. And we started seeing this back in the spring of last year. Some companies said, yeah, look, it's a crisis. It's hard for all of us, suck it up. You know, we just need to work harder to get through it. And other companies said, yeah, okay, this is a problem, but you know what? We're, we're here, we're gonna try to be supportive. I heard of companies in May of 2020 who said, hey, everyone for this month, Everyone just take Fridays off, paid Fridays off. So you've got an extra day to be with your family, your kids who are stuck at home, or we're gonna do a week off for the whole company. They've said, oh, we're gonna give everyone a couple hundred dollars to upgrade your home office back in the spring of 2020. These were the companies saying, look, we know things are different. We know it's chaotic, it's hard for everyone. How can we support you? And what we're seeing now is the biggest rewrite in the capital labor contract in about a century. We saw it, of course, during the labor movement in the 19th and early 20th century, where he said, hey, 40 hour work week and we want safety measures. Now we're seeing people say we want more. Some of it's more money. We do see some upward wage and pressure uh, and upwards wage pressure. So people are saying I can get more money somewhere else. But equally important, more so in many cases, they want a company that cares about employee engagement, companies that upskill them, companies that give them opportunity, companies that don't treat them like cogs, companies that say we care about you and hey, we do need mental health days every so often when we're going through chaos. Companies that listen to employees and try to incorporate their feedback. People are looking for companies where the company aligns to their own values. They have a work culture that they enjoy. Even caring about things like corporate social responsibility. Is this company a good social citizen? So there's a lot more than just, here's what I'm offering, here's the salary and benefits, medical, whatever. It's not just financial anymore, it's alignment on this broader set of goals. And those are the companies who are gonna do well. And I think right now they're already asking themselves the question you raised of, okay, we lost some, what do we do to not lose the others? Because we know it's just gonna get worse if we don't do these things. Yep. I, I totally agree. Thank you for unpacking that. I know, as you said, that was quite a, quite a lot. I, I could ans ask questions and go on and on and on because this is very close to my heart and, and what we do here. So thank you for clarifying that. I do have one question uh, before I ask how people can get in touch with you. Um, what do you believe is the future of work? Oh, good question. I do think we're going to be in hybrid workplaces in the short term. And in fact, I was running, I was at a virtual company before COVID. I wanted some of us to be together in New York because there was some value. We found we were doing about three days a week. Although actually it was, I'm going to say two and a half because we were doing about three days a week. But I noticed days where it was heavy rain or snow, I'd get a lot of messages. Hey, I'm just going to work from home today. <laughs> it, was, it was about three sunny days in the office, maybe, maybe closer to two in the winter. I do think virtual can work. I think we're gonna see a swing where people first say, oh, well, I can just be, we're a virtual company. 
I can do zero days in the office or letting me do it. I'm going to go move to the beach. But then they're going to discover the secondary effects that you're not building your internal network in that company. You're not building the network within the community in that big city. If you're in finance, for example, there's an advantage to being in New York. You go out to the happy hour, you meet other people. So we're going to see a swing back a few years down the road as people say, wait, I do need to be within driving distance, within a one day's travel to a city so I can be in the office part time, even if it's just a few days a month. I think we're also going to shift and say, this relates a little more to education. We can't just have the one and done. You studied for four years. Now you're done. Now have your career. It's going to be a little more back and forth. Okay, four-year degree for some. Then you work for a bit. Then maybe you go back for six months or you do some continuous learning. We're going to see more online learning. We'll see maybe you can drop back some hours instead of if you're working 40-hour weeks. For this quarter, it's going to be 10, 30 hour weeks and 10 hours of training. So we're going to see more continual training that companies have to invest in if they want to attract and retain employees. Yeah, with technology and the advancements that we're having in AI and machine learning and all these other whiz bang things that are happening right now, um, we're going to have to do continued education. Absolutely. If you want to stay on the you know, the cutting edge of the industry in whichever industry you're in. I, I, I could agree with you 110%. Um, I can't, I can't st stop learning fast enough. It's crazy. It seems like, oh, I finally got this. And then next day is something else. What's that? <laughs> you know, so it's, it's so fast. And you're right. Um, the more we can offer continued education, I think the better off. I agree with what your, your um, uh, definition of the future work. I definitely agree with that. I think it's uh, there's a certain need. Uh, there was a study done by Dojo.co where they had a software development company, 200 and something employees, just over 200 employees. Well, what they found out was their developers, the lines of code increased 76%, the lines of code by, the, by these programmers. But they couldn't figure out why it was taking so much longer to get the new versions released. And they found out it was because they were all working remotely. They were a lot more productive. But when they put the things together, they were having all these bugs that they had to work out with because they missed that interactivity, you know, in person, talking about planning, you know, oh, if it does this, you got to do that. Oh, OK. So there is a need for that, in, in my opinion. And according to Dojo, there is going to be a need. But what we've seen in that future of work with the hybrid model is you'll be able to identify the roles that will be able to either be 100% remote, 90% remote, whatever the case may be. But as you said, I agree. I think the future, we're going to have to come back because that in-person, there's that cultural value too, that like you're right there, you know, and human beings, we're social animals, right? <laughs> it's even things like as I'm going to the proverbial water cooler, I run into you there and say, oh, by the way, did you hear what we're doing on this project? That wasn't a planned meeting. That wasn't some formal thing, but that's a natural part of our communication. We're not going to, and I can just jump on Zoom and say, oh, hey, by the way, guess what I just heard? So we do need some of that spontaneous communication that you get by being co-located. Well, fantastic. Mark, I can't thank you enough uh, for joining us today. I want to be respectful of your time. Um, and I know we've gone a little bit longer today, but I I have a million more questions <laughs> that I would love to ask, um, but I will save those for people to come visit you. How do people get in touch with you if they want to learn more or you buy can, your book? You can go to my website, thecareertoolkitbook.com. There you can see where to buy my book, Amazon and elsewhere. You can get in touch with me or follow me on social media. I put out new content every week. There is an app page. And that has a free app with a lot of content from the book. I link to the Android and iPhone stores where you can download the free app. And then there's also the resources page where I list other great books, free online resources, and a bunch of free downloads, including how to create that development program for your organization that I mentioned earlier. That's on the resources page and all of this at thecareertoolkitbook.com. Wow. Thank you so much. So much, so much to offer there. Um, Mark, is there anything else you would like to say before we wrap? Thank you for having me on the show. It's been a pleasure and good luck to all of our listeners in your careers and in your companies. Wow. Thank you, Mark. Do you have just a second and I'll wrap up here? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Thank you again. We have been talking with Mark Hirschberg. Uh, 
the career toolkit book. Dot com. I want to make sure to put book in the end there. The career toolkit book.com. Go check it out. Uh, Mark is the author of Career Toolkit Essential Skills for Success that no one taught you. I bet you a lot of people can resonate with that. Uh, he's on social media. You can go follow him on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And if you want to get his book, which I highly encourage you to do, um, go to the career toolkitbook.com forward slash buy. Also check out the resources page. Uh, I, I think you'll really enjoy that. Um, and so I've been talking with Mark Hirschberg about creating your own career toolbook um, and uh, just had a lot of fun talking with him, uh, graduate MIT. The guy knows his stuff. Um, so definitely reach out to him. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to see more episodes similar to this, learn how you can break through the bottleneck in your business today by going to bottleneck.online forward slash BTV. That's short for bottleneck television. Uh, you can also go and subscribe to um, uh, bottleneck to online slash TV. And just so that you know, that is our YouTube channel. Would love to see you there. Uh, if you want to learn more about my book, quit repeating yourself, you can quit repeating yourself. Uh, stop doing the things, stop doing the wrong things so you can focus on doing your best work. I wrote this book on how today's leaders are using systems and processes to grow their business the right way. Uh, so uh, if you missed my earlier episode uh, last week, I talked with my good friend, David Schreiner Khan, who many of you know is a community builder. We talked about how to build a successful consulting business after 20 plus years as an employee, making that transition. And you can go learn more by going to smashingtheplateau.com. You can listen to that uh, on our channel. Coming soon to your earbud, I'm going to be talking with Alexander Sprague, Epic Choices, Epic Life, How to Plan, Achieve, and Enjoy the Journey. That's coming up next Wednesday, January 26th at 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern. I uh, can't wait uh, for that conversation. Again, one last time, I want to say thank you so much uh, to Mark Hirschberg, Creating Your Career Toolkit. Go check him out at creating your, uh, and, and I'll pop the, the website back up here real fast, the career toolkit book. Dot com. Go check it out. Thanks again for tuning in. Remember, create your own ripple and uh, we will talk to you soon. Have a great one.